Greetings. I'm Seth Narbass. I'm a patent attorney in New Orleans. I got my start in the intellectual property business in 1982 when I worked as a patent examiner in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in Washington, D.C. I hope that you find the information in this video useful. Now, the information that is presented here is designed to make the viewer aware of issues involving intellectual property law. It is not legal advice, and a patent attorney should be consulted promptly if the viewer has any intellectual property issues, as some issues can be time sensitive. Today, we'll be talking about typical co LLC and ideal co LLC. We'll go through an IP inventory for each company. Typical Co LLC's IP inventory has problems and is missing information. Ideal Co LLC's inventory is prepared with the assistance of the owner, and any problems are fixed as the IP inventory is prepared. We will go through Typical Co's IP inventory and its problems, and go through Ideal Co's IP inventory and explain what Ideal Co did correctly to avoid problems. Now, we'll start with the patent properties portion of the IP inventory for typical co, and we'll make the assumption that deadlines listed in the table have not yet occurred. In other words, in the table, we have a deadline of the 28th of May. Assume that we're taking action prior to that date. So let's start with the leftmost column. Um, this is a U.S. patent application involving inventors John Boudreau and Pierre Thibodeau, uh, one typical co-employee, one machine co-company employee, and neither of them has an obligation to assign patent rights. Now, the date of first non-confidential disclosure was the 28th of May 2019. The invention is power tongs, and they're sold under the mark Power 200. So a U.S. patent application is due by the 28th of May 2020, one year from the first non-confidential disclosure of the invention. There could be some foreign patent rights available, but they would be limited uh, as most foreign countries require a patent application be filed before an invention is made non-confidential in any way. This is the portion of Idealco's IP inventory relating to patents. A patent application has already been filed. It was filed on the 14th of May 2019, listing John Jones, who has an obligation to assign to Idealco LLC, and Pierre Thibodeau, a machine co employee, who likewise has an obligation to assign to Idealco LLC. Now, the reason why they both had an obligation to assign to Idealco LLC is because Idealco LLC had everyone sign agreements before production began, before the invention was developed, requiring everyone who worked on the invention to assign patent rights to Idealco LLC. Now, the first non confidential disclosure of the invention was on the 28th of May, 2019 after the patent application was filed. The, the patent application is for a centralizer for perforating operations, and it's sold under the, under the trade name Ideal Scent 1001. A full patent application in the US and a possible PCT application is due on the 14th of May, 2020. Now the applicants are Ideal Co and the assignment of record is Ideal Co, and the assignment was recorded in July of 2019. It's really important to get assignments and to record them promptly, as some rights can be lost if that doesn't occur. Continuing the patent properties portion of the IP inventory for Ideal Co, we see another patent application. Uh, that was filed in November of 2000 by Competitor Co. And there's an issued patent that issued in 2003 and is for a centralizer. And the patent um, is to expire 
in November of 2020. Now, IdealCo has this in its table because it needs to make sure that it avoids infringing this patent until the patent expires. Now, this is a portion of typical Co's IP inventory involving trademark properties. In the first row, the owner is typical Co. The uh, goods or power tongs. The first use date is the 14th of July, 2019. The status direction due is to file a federal trademark application or maybe find a better, a new better trademark. Uh, the mark is Power 200. And unfortunately, there is an existing trademark registration for Power 300 owned by Tonco LLC for Power Tongs. Now, in the next row, Typical Co. is also the owner. The uh, goods are all field tool rentals. First use date of June 2005. Again, the status or action due is to file a federal trademark application. And the mark is Typical Co. That is the company's name. It's his trade name it really ought to protect it by filing a registration application. Here's the portion of the IP inventory for IdealCo for trademark properties. In the first row, we have a trademark application filed May 14, 2019, owned by IdealCo. The goods are centralizers for perforating operations. The first use state was the 10th of July, 2019. So you can see the application was filed after, or rather, I'm sorry, the use began after the application was filed. The status is that there is a response that needs to be filed by the 14th of March, 2020. The mark is for Ideal Scent 101, and a potentially conflicting mark is registration number 2222222 for Ideal Scent. I'm sorry, Ideal Cert, owned by Certain Co. Inc. for drill bits for all field use. So we have Ideal Cert as the existing registered mark, Ideal Cent 100 as the proposed um, mark, centralizers for perforating operations for the new mark, and drill bits for all field use for the old. This may be a challenge, but we believe that IdealCo may prevail and get a registration for its trademark. Next, we have a trademark application that was filed in July of 2008, uh, owned by IdealCo. There's an existing registration issued in 2009. The goods are all field tool rentals. The first use date was the 15th of September 2008, again, sometime after the trademark application was filed. So what IdealCo did properly is it checked first to see whether or not the mark might be available. And then it filed its trademark application and then uh, it began use later. That's the proper, the best order in which to do things to minimize the chance that there will be problems with trademark registrations. So the Action due or renewals due every 10 years, and the mark is ideal co. Next, we talk about copyright properties. And typical co has text on this website, owned by, unfortunately, its website developer. The website developer created it, and under US copyright law, the website developer owns the copyright in the work. The status or action due is that an assignment agreement is needed with the website developer. Next, we have photos on the website. And in this case, the owner of the photos are various authors because the photos were downloaded from the internet. There's a problem with that um, because um, under US copyright law, copyright protection is automatic. Just because something appears on the internet does not mean that you have the right to copy it. And typical code could be charged with copyright infringement 
for reproducing those photos on its internet. So the solution is that typical code needs to replace those photographs with photos to which typical code has rights. And typical code can either have the photographs taken by its employees or by its web developer, but with an agreement that typical code will have the rights to use the photographs. Ideal Co, on the other hand, had um, its website text and photos created by its employees. And under the Work Made for Hire statute in the US, that means that Ideal Co owns the copyright in these items. The uh, status is that the copyright is not registered and no agreement is needed because by operation of law, ownership resides in Ideal Co. Now, we also have an animated video, which is owned by Ideal Co. It was created by Video Co, but there was a written agreement before the video was created requiring Video Co to assign the copyright to Ideal Co. And in this case, again, uh, the um, red, it is not registered, um, and there's an agreement that states that not only is the copyright assigned to Ideal Co, but all electronic files needed to alter the work are given to Ideal Co. That's a very important provision in an agreement because it does Ideal Co no good to have the right to alter the files or to alter the work if it doesn't have the underlying electronic files necessary to do that. Trade secrets. Typical Co has uh, an electronics for control of the power tongs. All of the employees uh, know about it. Nobody signed agreements. Unfortunately, any of these employees can tell anybody they want about these electronics. And therefore, unfortunately, if it's currently a trade secret, it won't be a trade secret for long. On the other hand, Ideal Co created a lubricant formula. Two of its employees know about it. They have both signed agreements to keep it confidential. And there's an agreements folder on the Ideal Co server. There's a printed copy in the Ideal Co safe and an electronic copy in the patent attorney's electronic files for Ideal Co. One important thing about trade secrets is not just that they are subject to the um, to reasonable efforts to keep them confidential, but it's also important that they be properly documented in the event that someone dies, someone switches jobs, uh, something happens, the only copy of the formula gets lost. It's important to have multiple copies in different locations. Now. Typical Co. has a website, and its domain name is typicalco.com. The current host is listed there. Status is that it needs to be renewed in 2020. And the registrar is shown there. And the person who knows where all the information is kept is also shown in the table. Ilco, you see here, host its own, I'm sorry, it, the, I, the domain name is Ideoco. It's hosted by BA Marketing. The passwords are saved in a location where Ideoco employees can find them. Um, the renewal status is listed in the table. And John Jones is listed as a person with information about where the registrar login information is kept. Going back to typical Co, we don't know where the information is kept and uh, the person keeping the information is not a typical Co employee. And again, it's important for companies to know how to control their own website, how to control their domain name, and have information about who in their company knows this information and to make sure that information is secure somewhere. 
Now, Typical Co's social media is listed here. Unfortunately for Typical Co, it has none. Ideal Co, on the other hand, is aware of the value of social media. It has a Facebook page, a Twitter account, and a LinkedIn account. It keeps track of when the last post occurred so that it can update or post at a frequency that is considered um, appropriate for each of the different types of social media so that their social media doesn't look too stale or conversely uh, too busy. And they list in their table the website, the person who knows the password, how to contact them, and then a document where all of the login information is kept. Now, for corporate entities, it's important to keep track of when annual reports are due. A lot of companies don't do this, and they frequently fail to file their annual reports. So we recommend that our clients keep in this IP inventory information about when their annual reports are due and who's responsible for doing that, namely their corporate attorney and the contact information. So here in this table, we've got everything we need now. Um, but as you can see, even assuming that this is taking place sometime in 2019 or early 2020, the annual report is long overdue. Idealco, on the other hand, uh, is in good standing. Um, it's got an annual report that's due sometime in the future. Uh, and it lists, this table lists its current attorney and contact information for that attorney. Now, it's also important to list key employees and contractors in this IP inventory and to make sure that there are agreements which, with each of these. So in this case, John Boudreaux is a typical typical co-employee. We don't see a uh, we don't see an agreement here. Um, Machine Co, an important supplier, no agreement. Video Co, another important supplier, no agreement. Ideal Co, on the other hand, has an employment agreement, which includes an assignment obligation with John Jones, and the agreement is kept um, in multiple locations. Machine Co. Uh, has also signed a confidentiality, confidentiality and assignment agreement, and that is kept in a safe place. Video Co. has signed a confidentiality and rather a copyright assignment agreement, uh, stating in part that all electronic files needed to alter the work are given to Ideal Co. Rights of publicity occur in some businesses. Uh, especially with advertising. So in this case, assume Ronnie Receiver is a wide receiver for the Saints. Um, we have the contact information for this famous person. Um, we mention in the third column the presence or absence of a licensing agreement. In this case, uh, there was no written agreement, unfortunately. So when Ronnie died unexpectedly, unexpectedly, his wife, Rhonda, sent a letter and demanded termination of use of the commercials for the Power 200 Tongs with Ronnie's likeness. On the other hand, Ideal Co. hired Drew Payton, and the contact information is shown here, and did get a written license agreement for use of the name and likeness of Drew Payton to endorse Ideal Scent 101 centralizers. And these agreements are kept in a folder on the Ideal Co server. There's a printed copy in the Ideal Co safe and an electronic copy in the patent attorney's electronic files for Ideal Co. More information about intellectual property can be obtained from the author of this work, who is, re who is solely responsible for his content. I hope that you have gotten some use out of this video. And thank you for watching it.